In the last two years, there's been a degree of fight within the West Indies team, especially when it comes to their bowling attack. One man who spearheaded that fight, spearheaded the bowling attack as well, bowling in some of the toughest parts of the innings, is left arm spinner Akil Hossein, currently ranked third in the world of T20 international bowlers. Akil, it's been a fascinating journey for you in T20 international cricket. If you had a few sentences to describe the journey, how would you put Akil Hossein's journey in international cricket so far? Um, I think it was pretty rough to start. I think my first two games, I was, my economy was 12 or something like that. Um, but it got better, you know, with, with, ex, with opportunities, you get better once you focus and you want to do better or want to do good for yourself. So I had a lot of learnings taking place. You know, we had lots of senior guys around at the time when I made my debut. So it's just about putting in the work. Eight years ago, the team that you currently sit in won a T20 World Cup. You were about 23 years old. Do you remember where you were during that tournament and, and what do you remember of it? I think I was probably home looking on. I mean, to get that sort of glory and success uh, brought back to the West Indies, um, it was a fantastic feeling. And just looking on, you would say to yourself that, you know, someday you want to be there and you want to have that same sort of feeling, that same energy, that same success that those guys have. And what a better opportunity than to have it in our own backyards. Two men who were so pivotal in the T20 international glory days of West Indies cricket were Samuel Badri and Sunil Narain, two spinners from your country. Just what role did they play in your personal development and even your inspiration to want to play this sport at the highest level? I think when it comes to opening the ball in, um, that aspect, you know, Samuel Badger really led the way. He really started, you know, spinners opening the bowling. It was not something that we've seen um, across the, the T20 formats with spinners opening. So he set the platform and, you know, just having conversations with him. What was his thoughts? What was his mindset? Um, what was his plans? And obviously working with Sunil as well, it's just, um, I would say, a total package. Two of the best in the world. In, but you get a bit of both. Samuel is in the power play with only two guys out. Sunil is in the middle um, and being that definite wicket taker in the middle. So you get the best of both worlds in both situations. It's a plus for me to get to have that information. Whereas I can set myself up to bowl from overs one to maybe 16, 17 or even 20 if, that, if that's the case. Yes, yeah, interesting you mentioned that because bowling in the power play probably is the toughest thing for any T20 bowler to do and you've done it religiously now for the last couple of years. What have you sort of had to add to your game to be able to do that? I think it started with conversations with Dwayne Bravo where he said, listen, as a spinner or as, as a bowler on the whole, you're going to get it. More so in the power play when there's only two guys out. Just clear your head and it all boils down to execution. You execute, more than likely you're going to win that one ball battle. Um, so for me, it's just about doing my homework on the particular batsman and I just back myself to execute. And I know once I do that, and another thing Dwayne always says, he says, if you have to get hit, make sure you're getting hit to your boundary fielders. So there's one or two key points that I try and focus on in the power play. But I think the main thing that you have to eliminate as a bowler is being scared of getting hit. And just at the top of your mark, just be clear and trust yourself and know that as long as you execute, you're 50% or 75% winning that battle. The one thing I have to ask you is about your celebrations. We see you on the field, but even off the field sometimes, on Instagram, on social media. You're always watching cricket and always supporting your friends. Why do you think you always want to be sort of locked in and engaged with the sport? My little brother and I, when we play uh, video games, you know, sometimes we scroll through the celebrations and we think, we go through which one he thinks is cool and then we just mimic it. Or sometimes we just come up with random stuff and we say, okay, I'll, I'll try it and see how it looks. You'll probably think I'm saying this guy's name so much, but again, Dwayne Bravo said, he said, listen, if you want to become the best in this, you have to, you have to be 100% in it. I mean, I watch lots of cricket matches. He said, there's always something that you can learn. You're never too old to learn and you can learn something from the lowest grade cricket matches. And for me, it's just about, I like to see my friends do well. I like to see my, my people win and I'm there to support them, you know, even if, so for, for instance, IPL, I wasn't a part of it, but for me, that doesn't matter. I'm there, my friends are there. I'm gonna tune in, I'm gonna give them the support. 
yeah, and I'm going to give them all the encouragement from back home. You've obviously been a part of the last two T20 World Cups, but given that this one is at home, does it feel a bit more special? This one being in the Caribbean, um, you're closer to home, and, and I mean, I think we're much better prepared as an as a entire group, and I think the, the hunger in this team is, is very, very high. I think this one could really be special. And as I said, to do it in front of your home crowd, there's no better feeling. Do you feel sort of a lift when it comes to playing at the Queen's Park Oval or playing at the Brian Lyle Cricket Academy in front of your home Trinidad and Tobago crowd? Yeah, definitely. It adds comfort to, to you walking onto that cricket field, knowing it's that it's an environment that you're accustomed to. It's a pitch that you're, you're familiar with. It's a surroundings that you're familiar with. And at the end of the day, you know the stadium is bound to be filled with your supporters. So it's definitely a boost and a different sort of settings playing in those environments. Big summer ahead. Excited for what's to come? Definitely, definitely. Lovely, man. Thanks a lot. Thanks.